Hi, this is Dr. Caitlin Neary from Boise, Idaho, and I'm going to be presenting the cost effectiveness of the tightrope for unstable syndesmotic injuries. This was a question I sought out to answer a few years ago in order to contribute to the already growing body of evidence comparing screws versus tightrope suture button fixation for unstable syndesmotic injuries. At the time of publication of this study, there was ample literature comparing screws versus suture button fixation for variables such as accuracy of reduction, strength of fixation, and rate of hardware removal. But there was no current studies evaluating the cost effectiveness of these two fixation devices. The purpose of this study was to evaluate and report the cost effectiveness of two common syndesmotic fixation methods, specifically a single tightrope suture button versus two 3.5 millimeter syndesmotic screws without routine planned postoperative hardware removal. In the present study, there was a theoretical cohort of patients who were all assumed to have sustained an unstable syndesmotic injury. Each patient was then allocated to one of two treatment states, either fixation with a tightrope suture button or fixation with two 3.5 millimeter syndesmotic screws. Each patient was then allocated to one of three health states based off of reported probabilities in the literature. Patients were assumed to either do well, require revision in the form of hardware removal for symptomatic hardware, or progress on to failure. Multiple variables were estimated based on a literature search in which only the highest level of available evidence was utilized. Patients were then allocated to each of these health states based on reported probabilities in the literature. I chose a screw hardware removal rate of 20%, which was the mean reported in the literature. I also chose a suture button hardware removal rate of 4%, which was the mean reported in the literature. I defined failure as progression to end-stage arthritis and assumed this occurred in approximately 9% of patients. I also assumed both functional outcome and failure rates to be equivalent among the two groups to keep these from being controversial variables. Table one lists the average direct costs associated with this type of surgical procedure, including the cost of the index procedure, hardware removal, and implant pricing. Table two lists the multiple health utility index values which were used to measure effectiveness of each of these implant devices. Following calculation, I found that the tightrope fixation was clearly the dominant treatment strategy in which it was not only more effective, but also less expensive. Patients with tightrope fixation, on average, spent $1,482 less with a higher quality of life by 0.058 quality adjusted life years over an eight-year time period. I then performed a sensitivity analysis in which the cost of the implant was varied from $880 all the way up to $2,000. And even at $2,000, the tightrope still remained more cost effective. I then ranged the screw hardware removal rate from 20% all the way down to 5%. And for screws to become more cost effective, you would have to have a less than 10% hardware removal rate. I then examined and compared multiple other variations of fixation, including one screw versus one tightrope, one screw versus two tightropes, and two screws versus two tightropes. And despite all of these other variations of fixation, a single tightrope still continued to remain the most cost effective option. The results of this study suggest tightrope to be the most cost effective option, especially for screw hardware removal rates greater than 10%. The findings of this study will hopefully serve as an adjunct to the decision making process regarding implant selection when faced with various implant options for unstable syndesmotic injuries in the future. Thank you.